and give you beyond your prayers in Jesus' name. Wellness. Everybody shout wellness. It will be well with your soul. Well with your spirit. Well with your body. Well with your family. It is well. It is well with my soul. With my soul. Everybody sing it is well. It is well. Sing it with a good voice. It is well. With my soul. It is well. Sing it for the last time. The Lord confirm it in your life in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for this day. Beautiful day and great day. A day of great expectation. And we're asking, O oh Lord, that the expectation of your people will not be cut short in Jesus' name. Fulfill their desires. Answer their prayers. Touch and transform every life. And do good in every life in Jesus' name. Lord, where there is sickness, let there be healing. Well, there is any disturbance, O oh Lord, let there be calm. And when there is any fear, Lord, I pray you clear all the fears away in Jesus' name. Your people will be more than conquerors. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Consider we're coming to Romans chapter 8. And we're looking at verse 11. We're looking at the resurrection power of Christ. And how that impacts the wellness of the body. The healing of the body. The health of the body. The resurrection power and the wellness, wellness in his resurrection power. Look at Romans chapter 8 and verse 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, the spirit of him, the spirit of God, the spirit of resurrection that raised up Jesus, if he dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also, also, as he did on that resurrection day, he will also, as he did to Christ and he raised him up, he will also quicken your mortal body by his spirit that dwelleth in you. There's a lot there. It says there is power, the power of the spirit. And the power of resurrection. It raised up Jesus Christ from the dead. And everything that is dead or dying in your body will be quickened today in Jesus' name. Wellness, healing, health, soundness in his resurrection power. The three things we're looking at. Number one, the promise of wellness and health. The promise of wellness and health. Point number two, the prayer for wellness and healing. Healing is there, available for you, available for me. 
and we pray. And as we pray, God answers our prayers, and you are healed in Jesus' name. The prayer for wellness and healing. Number three, the preservation of wellness through holiness. How do you preserve your healing? How do you preserve your wellness? How do you preserve the miracle that God does in your life? Through a holy life, holy attitude, and holy disposition, holy nature, and a life of holiness, the preservation of wellness through holiness. Number one is the promise. The promise is yours. It will be fulfilled. It will set you free. From every sickness, it will set you free from any predicament in your life in Jesus' name. Let's look at the promise now. Number one, the promise of wellness and health. We're looking at Exodus chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 26. Exodus chapter 15, verse 26, and said, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and wilt do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes. Look at the promise now. I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which are brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. It tells us here the condition of fulfillment for the promise. It says, if you will hearken to the voice of the word of the Lord, if you will do that diligently, and you will not allow anything to take the word away from your heart, every word he has spoken to us, the word of salvation, the word of repentance and the word of faith in Christ, having faith in the Lord, and the word of restoration, restitution, and the word of renewal, the word of revival. If you will hack into the voice of the Lord your God, and you will do exactly as he has said, he said, I will put none of these diseases upon you. I claim that. I said, I claim that. The disease of Egypt will not be upon your life in Jesus' name. And he said, I am, I am, I am, not I was, not I will be, but I am, even at the present time, I am the Lord that he lets thee. That's the promise he gave to the children of Israel, and that's the promise he's giving to every one of us. Isaiah chapter 53. I'm reading from verse 4. Isaiah chapter 53, we're looking at verse 4. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. He's looking forward to when Christ will die on the cross of Calvary. And he says the purpose is that he will be wounded for our transgression and bruised for iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And tell me what you find there. And with his stripes, we are healed. With his stripes, the stripes of suffering, the stripes of agony, and the stripes of punishment laid upon him. With those stripes, I am healed. I am healed. You are healed in Jesus' name. Jeremiah chapter 30. And I'm reading from verse 17. Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 17. For I will restore health unto thee. Let me hear his thunderous amen. He will do it. Nothing can stop him. Satan cannot stop him. Evil spirit cannot stop him. The curse of men or women cannot stop him. Anything that happened in the past cannot stop him. Anything around you there cannot stop him. He says, I will, for I will restore health unto thee. I will heal thee of thy wants. Internal wants he will heal. 
external wounds, it will heal. Any kind of uh, cancerous wound, he will heal. He says, I will heal thee of thy wounds, says the Lord, because they called thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. But thank God, your healing time has now come. Jeremiah chapter 33. I'm reading from verse 6. Behold, I will bring it health and cure. There's no incurable disease here. The Lord said every mountain he will move. Every sickness he will heal. Every disease he will take away. It says, Behold, I will bring it health and cure. I will cure them. I will cure them. Them who? Them where? Them over there? Them in front of me? Them on that other side? I will kill them. I will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. The time is getting near. Healing is running after you. Deliverance is looking for where you're sitting or standing. It is coming. I said it is coming. Be it confirmed in your life in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 16. Matthew chapter 8 verse 16. When the evening was come, they brought unto him many, many, Many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word. With his what? He cast out the spirits, tell me with what? With his word. That word is coming to you today. And he healed all that was sick, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Zayas the prophet, saying, He took our infirmities and he bare our sicknesses. First Peter chapter 2, verse 24. First Peter chapter 2, verse 24. Who is soon self? That's Christ. Who is soon self? Not an angel. Who oh, his own self, not a religious man, but Christ himself, who oh, his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, shall live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. You have been healed. It's now for you to rise and claim that healing is coming your way. Point number two, the prayer for wellness and healing. The prayer for wellness and healing. The Lord expects us to pray and to seek his face so that what he has promised by prayer and faith, we claim. Look at Psalm 107. Psalm 107. I'm reading from verse 17. Fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquities are afflicted. Maybe you've been wondering why this, why that in your life. Why this in your body? If you check up very well and you dig deep very well to the lifestyle you are leading, you might find out that iniquities abound. You might find out that carelessness, even sometimes is hygienic carelessness, that we don't take care very well. And because of that, Afflictions come. Those afflictions, the Lord will take away today. 
their soul abhorreth all manner of meat. So seek, they lose appetite, and they draw near to the gates of death. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble. That means they pray, and the Lord will take away all those infirmities in Jesus' name. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, in their trial, in their affliction, in their sickness, and the Lord saveth them out of their distresses. How did he do that? Verse 20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. He did it before and he says, I am God, I change not. His power has not changed. His compassion has not changed. And his manifestation of majestic miracles, that has not changed. Numbers chapter 21. In Numbers chapter 21, reading from verse 4, And he journeyed from Mount Or by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. You see, there are many people that instead of looking at Christ and looking at the Lord, instead of looking at the word of God and the commandments of God, they're looking at the way. They're looking at the roughness of the road. And they're looking at the slope of the mountain, of the, of the way they ought to go. And because of that, they're discouraged. And discouragement pushed them to do something unwholesome. Verse 5, and the people speak against God. Can you imagine? They had done a lot in their lives. And they got them through quite a lot of dangers, diseases, and difficulties. And now they speak against God and against Moses. Think about that. God in heaven had done what no one could do for them. Man on earth, Moses, had done what no other person on earth had done for them. And in the time of discouragement, they spoke against God in heaven and they spoke against Moses on earth. Wherefore, have ye brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water. Neither is there any water. Look at these people. These were the people the Lord told Moses to strike the rock before this time. And that water will come out. And water came out for them out of the rock two times. And now they're saying there's no water. Not any water at all. And our soul loathed this light bread. The bread from heaven. The Lord sent furry serpents among the people. That's because of their sin. The sin of their tongue. And they beat the people and much people of Israel died. Watch over your tongue, you will not die prematurely. Words of anger, words of fretting, words of worry, words of anxiety, words of slander, words of abuse, words of strife, they bring problems upon our lives. Whether those words are spoken by ministers or spoken by members, whether they are spoken by people who are high in authority or they are spoken by people who are low in recognition, words of anger and words of anxiety bring problems. Look at verse 6. And the Lord said, very serpents among the people, and they beat the people. And much people of Israel died. Therefore, the people came to Moses. And they said, 
We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord. Confession will bring kill. I said confession will bring kill. They said they have spoken against the Lord and against thee. This was not just confession, it was restitution. You see, in our lives, we shouldn't bottle our grief and our guilt. In our lives, we shouldn't hide our guilt. We shouldn't hide the condemnation. Your conscience tells you that your tongue has led you astray. Your life and manner of life has led you astray. You repent and you do the works meet for repentance. You make restitution. And it says, pray unto the Lord for us. They were now asking for prayer. As you're asking for prayer, and prayers are made, they will touch your life. It will heal your soul. It will heal your spirit. It will heal your body. Do I have any amen around the corner there? Pray that you take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a furry serpent, and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that, tell me, that how many people? How many people today that everyone that is speaking, when he looketh upon it, shall live? And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had beaten any man, any man, I'm looking at you, any man. I want to check up who is the any man there. Any man. Any man. The low and the high. The newcomer and the old timers. The men and the women. The young and the old. If the serpent had beaten any man, a walker, a member. If the serpent had beaten any man full time, part time, when he beheld the serpent of brass, tell me, tell me, you will live. I said, you will live. He lived. Look at Jeremiah chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 14, Jeremiah. Chapter 17, verse 14. Here is the prayer. The prayer for wellness. The prayer for healing. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 14. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. You see how simple the prayer is? Heal me, O Lord. And I shall be healed, save me, and I shall be saved, for thou art my praise. You'll praise God. You will testify. The Lord will touch you and roll. All those problems away in answer to your prayer, and you will praise the Lord in Jesus' name. In James chapter 5. James chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 14. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. And let them pray over him, anointing him with oil. That's an emblem of the Holy Spirit. Anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. It never fails. The prayer of faith never fails. It will not fail in your life. And the Lord will raise him up. 
And if he has committed sins, they, those sins shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another. He's still telling us that righteousness is the very foundation of wellness. You want to be healed, you want to be well, and you want to remain well, remain healthy. It says, if your conscience convicts you of any offense, small or great, against your wife, against your husband, against a member of the church, against a co-worker, against your company, if the Spirit of God convicts you, of any offense, of anything you shouldn't have done against your place of work, you will confess your faults to the appropriate authority there and then pray one for another that she may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man, somebody tell me out aloud, availeth much. It will avail in Jesus' name. Point number three now. The preservation of wellness through holiness. The preservation of wellness, of soundness, of health through holiness. We're coming back to Exodus chapter 15. Exodus chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 26 again. And said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and wilt do that which is right in his sight, and give ear, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Look at that verse very well. If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and then you will do what is right in his sight. What's that? That's holiness. Holding on to his word. Holding on to his word. When you do that and you say, that word has been spoken. I will not let that word go. And you hold fast to his word. Healing will come to you through the word. I can't hear my people say amen. Holding on to his word. We're looking at Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Hold on to that word. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. Look at this. For they, the words, are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. There's connection between healing, health, wellness, and holding on to his word. The connection between wellness and holiness you open the door of the oppressed we're looking at i say chapter 58 i say chapter 58 i'm reading from verse 6 you want to remain well all those you have bottled up lock the door he gives all the people you have oppressed and you have locked them in in a chamber of terror you will open the door for the oppressed in isaiah chapter 58 verse 6 is it not this the fast that i have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness 
to undo the heavy burden and to let the oppressed go free. Free them in your mind. Free them in your life. All those habits and all those uh, types of character that will try to be a terror to people and will oppress them. Open the door of oppression. Let them go free. Let the oppressed go free. That ye break every yoke. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? And that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house. And when, when thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. That kind of secret life that you are living with your husband, with your wife. And you are not exposing everything. You are not opening the door. Open the door. Let there be freedom in your family. Let oppression be something forgotten in your family. What's going to be the result? Look at verse 8. Verse 8. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thy health shall spring forth speedily. I didn't hear an amen there. It says, age of holiness, hold on to the word. The word of promise, the word of power, that you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, and you will pay attention to that word. And then, oh, of holiness, you open the door for the oppressed, that they will go free. El, look to the Lord. Look to the Lord. Did you hear when I read it to you in Numbers chapter 21? Look. To the Lord is the great physician, is the healer of the sick, is the one that took your sickness to Calvary and he nailed it to the cross. Look to the Lord, the great physician. I'm looking at Numbers chapter 21, verses 9, verses 8 and 9. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee furry serpent and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is speaking, when he looketh, when he looketh, he looketh upon it, shall live. Don't look at your symptom. Don't look at the medical books. Don't look at, you know, the swelling. Don't look at anything. Don't look at the bite. But look to the Lord. When he looketh upon it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had beaten any man, when he beheld, when he looked upon that serpent of brass, he lived. That's what Jesus was referring to in John chapter 3. John chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. You will have salvation. You will have healing. You will have deliverance. Your voice is tired. Each holds on to his word. He sent his word and healed them all. Speak the word only. And I and my servant will be healed. Hold to the word. Open the door for the oppressed. Take oppression away. Take all that terror and terrifying character away. Look to the Lord. I intercede for others. Many times, those who are sick, those who are having problems, they concentrate too much on self. It's like, look at my sorrow. Look at my problem. And look at this. And self-centeredness will come in. Selfishness will come in. 
And while you're looking at yourself all the time, yourself only, the problem continues. Selfishness, self-centeredness, self-concentration makes the problem to remain. But when you look away from yourself and you intercede for others, you remember others while you are praying for other people, your own miracle will come your way. I said your own miracle will come your way. Intercede for others. We're looking at Job chapter 42. You know the problem that Job had? Boils all over the body and pain all over the body. And there were arguments and discussions here and there. But the healing did not come with argument. Look at verse 10, Job chapter 42, verse 10. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. The Lord turned the captivity of Job, healed the sickness of Job, took away the infirmity of Job when he wasn't looking at himself or praying for himself, or mourning, or being sorrowful because of his condition when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Intercede for others and name him as your physician. Name him as your physician is a great physician and he has healed many like you whatever problem you are having now whatever challenges you are going through now 